If there's one habit I'm most proud of, it's my morning routine. No matter what time of the year, where I am, I will always set aside a time for myself in the first one hour to do a little bit of something that grounds myself. Be it doing meditation, doing a short workout, or jumping into a cold shower. Years of developing and tinkering the routine has really ingrained the idea in me that I want to always have a time to ground myself and set my day for success. I learned, however, that what's more important or as important as a morning routine is an evening routine. To set your day for success doesn't start the time when you get up, but the time before you go to bed. A solid evening routine should help us to accomplish the followings. One, helps us to wind down and get ready for bed. Two, reflect on our day and put a closure to it. Three, to plan and reset our environment to set ourselves up for success the next day. Despite knowing how important evening routine is, I have never really stuck to it with consistency. I knew the benefits, I really believed in them, but never really got around to set an intention to really stick to it. And that's why for the next 30 days, I'm committed to create and stick to my evening routine. So here's the breakdown of my evening routine. First of all, before I start my evening routine, I have a pre-routine routine. This is something that I've been cultivating for a while. Well, I didn't even realize that this was a routine until I started reflecting on it. But first, I'll make sure that I stop eating two to three hours before my bedtime, which is usually around 10 p.m. So that means that my last meal of the day will be at 8 p.m. Research has shown that having our meal close to our bedtime not only makes it difficult for us to fall asleep, it also makes it difficult for us to stay asleep, affecting our quality of sleep. The second thing I do is to reduce the amount of blue light exposed to my eyes that is present in all my screens and devices. More so than any other colors, blue light messes with our body's circadian rhythm the most. It does so by blocking melatonin in our body, which is an important hormone to make us feel sleepy and signals our brain that it's time for bed. Well, realistically, it's not possible for me to detach from my screens two hours before bed because there's so much that I want to get done. And so my life savior, which is a software I've been using for years, is Flux. I install it on my MacBook. I tell the software what time I usually want to wake up and automatically, a few hours before my bedtime, it will start putting this warm tone on my screen. So even though I'm still exposed to this screen light, it's not as intense as getting full direct exposure of bright blue light. Okay, so now jumping into the actual routine. The first thing I do is to turn on my airplane mode. It acts as a symbol to detach from the world and the beginning of the closure of my day. And the next thing I do is to begin my reflection. I reflected on the things I've accomplished during the day and I've also listed what I call the magic moments, which are moments that gave me joy and life and gratitude. I also take this time to reflect on my habits. I have a habit tracker either on my weekly note or on my apps, just a good idea to reflect on whether or not I managed to take off all these things that I want to build on the day-to-day -day basis. The next natural thing that follows is to plan for my day tomorrow. I will list down all the things that I have to get done and also take the time to prioritize which are the one or two things that are most important that I definitely need to get done. Once I'm done reflecting and planning for my day, what I do next is what they call resetting the environment. What I do is I clean up my desk, make sure that I do the remaining dishes. This might sound simple, but Mary Kondo, the author of The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, illustrated it very beautifully of how our physical space has a huge influence on our mental space. If our environment is messy, things are all over the place, it, it doesn't give us a sense of peace, creativity, and calmness that allow us to become our best selves. And a big part of that was also to save the amount of precious willpower that I have in the morning to only use that for, for a creative and meaningful deal. Work. So things like thinking about what I want to wear the next day, I could shift to the night before just to make sure that I really leverage the precious morning hours for something really important. On top of the physical space, I also clean up my digital space. I caught myself so many times when I opened my laptop, I got distracted by whatever that was left on my browser the night before and it took my focus away. So I want to make sure when I open my computer, I want to see a clean slate and I can perform whatever I need to get done with high intentionality. And finally, once I'm done with all that, I'm just gonna spend like five to 10 minutes reading a couple pages on Kindle. And just before I fall asleep, I'll do a visualization exercise as my coach recommended me. The reason is when we're in a complete relaxation, when we're just about to fall asleep, we access this state called the theta state, which is a state of deep relaxation in our brain where we're able to tap into our subconscious. So by doing a visualization exercise, by thinking about the dreams that I have, the life that I wanna have, the person that I wanna become, I'm sending these signals to myself 
subconscious to wire my belief systems. The idea is if I do this often enough on the day to day, I will act in accordance to the things that will get me closer to the life and the person that I want to have and become. Some of the drawbacks I realize, however, is when I get too distracted, my brain became too active and I ended up not being able to fall asleep. But after some time, I became used to it. I just have this narrative that I play in my head and right after I'm done, usually I'm ready to fall asleep. Okay, this sounds quite a lot and I don't remember this like instinctively. So what I do is I leverage an app called Routinery, which allows me to enter all my habits in the particular sequence that I want. And the moment I start, it will start a timer for each habit. And the moment one habit is done, it will move on to the next habit immediately. So this helps me to go through this motion and flow without having to exert my willpower to think, oh, what do I need to do next? So highly recommend to use it for you guys. It's hard to find it on iOS for some reason, so I will make sure to leave the link on the description below. So after going through this routine for 30 days, I can tell you that it is absolutely not easy. Because I'm such a morning person, I've used up all my creativity, willpower, and energy in the morning. At night, I'm pretty much drained to do anything that it requires high amount of discipline. The most challenging part is when I come home from a social event, I'm usually really drained. And after a few drinks, I, all I wanted to do was just like hit my bed. But just like any difficult things in life, the most difficult part is to get started. The moment I manage to bring myself to start the routine, most of the time I just get in the flow and I will go through the whole routine without much resistance, especially using the app. Routinery has certainly helped me to go what's next one after the other. And after doing this for 30 days, I can certainly see the difference is made in my days. One, it brings me a sense of closure because I tend to be overly ambitious who want to accomplish during the day. Often I didn't manage to complete all everything that I put on my to-do list. I'm often left with this feeling of incomplete, like there's some, there's more that I want to do and, and why did I manage to accomplish them? So I ended the day with a quite a negative note with a sense of dissatisfaction. But this routine has allowed me to put closure to really reflect on the things that I managed to accomplish during the day. Uh, the problem is uh, because of our recency bias, the last few things that leave an impression on me were like the things that I didn't manage to do in the last few hours versus all the things that I'm actually quite productive at accomplishing at the beginning of the day. And this reflection habit has helped to bring me that perspectives and to be more appreciative toward myself. And I really enjoy just ending the day with a sense of gratitude and appreciation. Put an end to the day no matter how it went and just brace myself and plan for a better day tomorrow. Secondly, I just really love waking up to a clean environment. Like, this is something new that I realized because I, I'm just so used to being a messy person. So I will always wake up to like a messy desk or a messy kitchen. And in, even though it sounds so simple, it just makes a huge difference in my mental space space and my mood. Weirdly, it also makes me feel more excited to go to my desk because I know that it's clean and tidy and I feel more energized to, to start doing work. And opening my laptop and my desktop to really a clean slate, it helps me to be more intentional with what do I want to be doing at that particular time that's most important to me. And lastly, it feels amazing to wake up with this sense of certainty and clarity with what is my intention and focus for the day. Avocado toast. On weekends especially, that is my weakest moment. Somehow on the weekends, I would have this distorted sense of time of how much time I have to kill for the day. So I ended up procrastinating, lying in my bed. And by the time I was finally ready to do work, I have to go socialize. And by the time I'm back home, there's no more, no much time left to do productive work. However, when I did plan for my weekends the night before, it makes a huge difference. I woke up with the feeling of, oh, there are these things that I need to focus on today and I shouldn't be wasting time in my bed. So I'll wake up knowing, oh, yes, I need to start going to my desk and do productive work. And I can certainly see the link between my evening routine and my morning routine. It helps me to ease into my morning routine a lot more smoothly. For example, I will make sure to wear my workout shorts the night before. So I, on the days when I didn't feel the motivation to go for a run, because I already have my running shorts on, and that gave me more motivation to just go out and start running. And I felt like I did sleep better knowing that I put an end to whatever that was occupying my mind for that day. Through each interaction and like work, we are accumulating all these thoughts that are piling up in our brain. And at the end of the day, we often felt overwhelmed and burned out. So it's really nice to like have whatever worries I have, whatever thoughts that were occupying me, jot it down on my journal and access uh, storage. 
of my thoughts and worries so that I will end the day with an anxiety and I'll go to bed with a peace of mind. So in conclusion, sticking to my eating routine has certainly brought tremendous benefits in my life. It's not that I ever doubted, I always knew and subscribed to the idea of having an evening routine, but previously I just never had that discipline. Similar to other habits that I've developed, I, after the 30 day challenge, I tend to be more flexible with it because what I've noticed is one, I have to balance between having a healthy sleeping hours with being disciplined with the routine because sometimes when I'm back late at night at night and I have to wake up early the next day, I don't want to spend another half an hour to delay my sleep time. So in some days where I felt like I really need to wake up early and I want to maintain and prioritize my sleep quality, then it's okay to let go of a few days of not doing the routine. One thing that I wish I would have done more of is to have a consistent time where I start my evening routine. Even though I've stuck to it every single day for 30 days, I didn't really start at the exact same time. It's only in the last few weeks that I locked in a time to begin my evening routine, which is at 9 p.m. It does condition my body to be ready to sleep. By the time it's 9 p.m., I'll do my routine. By the time it's done, I'll be in my bed at the same time and it'll condition my body to fall asleep immediately and have a better sleep quality. All right, I hope this video inspires you to start your own evening routine. If you're someone who struggles with a morning routine, it's even more important for you to start an evening routine because you can prime yourself to be more productive, calmer, and happier to start your day the next day. It's difficult, it's not easy, but just stick to it for a couple of days, do it with consistency, and remember, it's all these little exponential tiny actions that we take every single day that will shape us to be the person that we are proud of tomorrow. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.